Today on the IoT Show, we'll talk security and we'll talk about specifically the Azure IoT Edge security model. Eustace, our security guru here in the Azure IoT team, will tell us everything you need to know about how you secure IoT Edge devices. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today we'll talk security with Eustace. Uh, Eustace, thanks for coming on the show today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Olivier. Can you give Excellent. us a short introduction about yourself and what you're doing in the Azure IoT team? Absolutely. So I'm PM, Program Manager in the Azure uh, IoT Platform Engineering team. And my fa primary focus there is security for IoT. Awesome. Yes. So he is very modest, but he is our security <laughs> guru in the Azure IoT team. Basically. Thank you, Olivier. <laughs> so today you're here yes, to sir. tell us about the Azure IoT Edge security model. So we know security is key. Devices are kind of the weak link in an IoT application, one of them, right? Yes. Um, so we need, to, we need to think about security and securing devices, authentication, encryption, all that thing, right? Yes. But it's not easy to do. As a developer, it's something that is complex to implement, right? Absolutely. And when it's not easy, it means that we have to think through it and do it carefully so that we get it right from the ground up. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's one space that actually uh, we're focusing on, which is IoT Edge, which is uh, a runtime that we deliver, uh, an open source runtime that allows developers to bring the intelligence of the cloud and the workloads they're developing in the cloud at the edge. Correct. Right? And so that's a runtime. And yes. so there is an implication you know, for security as well in there. Uh, so let's dive into what we offer to secure devices that are running Azure IoT Edge. Absolutely. So uh, what we offer here is uh, an approach mm -hmm. uh, for everybody to build the right, the right security into edge devices. Mm -hmm. As you know, we provide the runtimes, but mm -hmm. it's up to uh, the deployment, the people doing uh, security deployments to f find where they source their devices okay. and work with the OEMs to build the right devices to it. And it's very important that we approach this in a uniform way that everybody understands mm -hmm. in order to do this. So to uh, show more as to what we're talking about, mm -hmm. let me go into some of the threats. So yes, IoT is very complex and that is why we need to approach it in a very uniform way mm -hmm. where everybody understands in order to make sure that we get it right. But before we deep dive into the model, let us understand why we need to protect okay. IoT Edge devices. So let's look into the threats yep. on there. So when it comes to IoT, one of the biggest threats there is physical accessibility of devices by potentially mm -hmm. bad actors. Yeah. When they get onto those devices, they have a lot more tools at hand that they can use to exploit uh, security, uh, exploit the devices. Yeah. So some of the engineering, the wonderful software engineering that you do in order to protect devices in general, when they have these additional tools, those uh, en that engineering, that mm -hmm. effort may not be enough at this yep. time. So yep. the devices need additional protection yep. on there. And, and that's a good point because actually a device um, in the IoT realm could be something that someone accesses, has at hand, can go analyze with very powerful tool, can look at the memory, the code, and so on in there. And so basically can really spend time at, at hacking these devices more easily than a machine in your data center on your Absolutely. properties is all locked down and so on, right? And the additional story there is that the tools are readily available in the industry today. So the engineering of knowing what a device is doing, yeah. uh, there is a lot of tools out there from other fields like a failure analysis. Mm -hmm. When there is a failure, the tools that they use to go into the device and find out why yeah, it yeah. failed, those same tools can be used to understand the internals of a device. It. So okay. it's easy to, 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 to get information out of the device. Yeah. So Another piece of information along these lines of threat and motivation that is important is what Azure IoT Edge does. Okay. It moves a lot of uh, uh, compute from cloud to edge, which is yep. the essence of intelligent edge. Yep, yep. And a part of that, what that means is there is a lot of intellectual property moving from the cloud to the D edge. Data, and right. when, it's doing, yeah. when it's doing the intelligent processing mm -hmm. on there, yeah. it is genera generating insights that mm. are valuable. And so yeah. what that means from a security point of view is that if somebody were to invest in attacking the device, the payback is very big. So I for that see. reason- If someone has, has created a very smart machine learning algorithm exactly. right, that no one else like thought about before, runs it on an edge device, it's potential IP that could be actually stolen. 
Exactly, okay, exactly. Sense. So the, they're willing to invest a lot more mm -hmm. money in order to do yeah. that. And one reason why we want to approach this in a uniform way, if you look at this IP uh, running on an edge device, mm -hmm. the IP does not belong only to one individual or one organization. It might be IP from other organizations as well, uh, yes. as well. Yeah. which is why we need to approach this in a very systematic way, in a very formal way, mm -hmm. to make sure that we protect the edge device in, in a way that everybody understands, that way everyone uh, who is uh, putting IP in a marketplace yep. that will eventually deploy on an edge device, they feel comfortable as to how Makes the sense. IP is going to be protected Makes on sense. there. Okay. Yep. And because of that, you want to protect the environment where those actions are being taken from. Otherwise, it will yep. be a, an easy point for a bad actor to be able yep. To, yep. To, to control critical yep. infrastructure. A good example of that is someone takes control of your gateway in your factory and right. hits the stop button. And when you know how expensive it is to actually stop a, uh, a chain in a factory, just realize you know, how important it is that no one has Absolutely. the device to take that action for you. Imagine them stopping generators uh, pumping electricity into their yeah, power no. grid. So yeah, it's very that. sensitive. That you way. don't want that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then the other threat here is that with IoT devices, it's not like there's one device that you use for every IoT application. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of uh, uh, heterogeneity, meaning that there are different kinds of devices using yep. different kinds of processors. NGS mm -hmm. uh, can use different languages of choice. Mm -hmm. What that means in security is that there is an expanded threat surface. You have to be looking at all these surfaces, the different devices, the different operating systems, the different yeah. software systems that are being used into it. And uh, in order to manage a fleet of devices mm -hmm. at scale, yeah, you need to yeah. have uniformity you know, on how you manage this. Okay. So uh, the expanded threat surface is something that needs to be managed mm -hmm. in order to make sure that you can apply security correctly at Got scale. It. Yes. So it's complex, it's, it's, a, it's a high value. So there's lots of risks. Uh, we understand that. It's complex. The, uh, the, the fact that there's like so many different types of hardware and so on makes it e even more difficult to secure. Yes. So I have a question for you, Eustace. So IoT Edge, the runtime that we have, runs on Windows and Linux. Yes. Right. These are OSs that actually yes. have security features in there. So why True. would I need something in addition to what's in there? So that's a great question. Operating systems have evolved uh, to, to provide a lot of security features mm -hmm. on there. And as long as those devices are in trusted custody, those security features continue to stand up. And with Azure IoT Edge and IoT Edge runtime, we engineer a lot of those software best practices mm -hmm. for security to have it in there. The difference with IoT is that these devices can exist in scenarios where you don't have a human component protecting it, or it may not exist in a physically, in a good physical perimeter mm -hmm. where where you know that the devices cannot be tampered with. Okay. So when that, uh, w when that exists, mm -hmm. then that means you need some additional method to make sure that, uh, and another component on yeah. here is that uh, devices uh, are remote, in IoT devices are remote. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you're yeah. a, a cloud app, a cloud application, they're getting instructions or they're getting mm -hmm. information from a device, mm -hmm. they really do not know uh, the physical uh, environment, environment of, of the that device, the device yes. is operating in. Yep. So in order to have trust uh, uh, in mm -hmm. the device, it is very good to build a model where uh, you can trust the device even when the operating systems have been tampered with. Remember, the operating systems were built to be secure as long as there is no physical intrusion into it. it. If somebody yeah. were to intrude into it, mm -hmm. how do you still make sure that you can still trust the system out okay. there? Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. And, uh, so and, yeah. yeah, so let's, let's see actually what it looks like. Okay. Let's, let's look at the principles of the IoT Edge uh, security model, right? And it's great to start with principles. That way yeah. you create a great foundation exactly. in order yeah. to build upon. Yeah. So the principles here is to start with a root of trust mm -hmm. hardware, a tamper-resistant root of trust hardware. Okay. And that is something that you can consider as a trust anchor. So when you get information from the device, this will provide mm -hmm. you a way to trust that this information is coming from the right yeah. source and uh, the integrity of the device has not been compromised. Okay. Okay. Then from that root of trust, you can then bootstrap uh, how the operating system runs on the device and okay. how all the applications runs on the mm -hmm. device. So you make sure that what runs is what you want to run. Basically. Exactly. Right. From the get-go. Exactly. Right. You don't want somebody to come in and run a different software on there that you don't know yeah. about. Yeah. So yeah, totally. high assurance boot mm -hmm. is very important okay. on that. Mm -hmm. And the next uh, layer, the next layer that you want on this is to have an environment where you can take privileged actions on there, actions that are meant to protect the systems. Mm -hmm. So we call this a secured execution environment yeah. uh, whereby you can actually watch like the operating system 
you can watch the operating system kernel mm -hmm. and watch other system parameters on okay. there in a trusted low uh, in a trusted high privilege environment okay. and finally all of this is building up to create a protected execution environment that mm -hmm. when azure I, where azure it edge runs and all the applications layered on top of azure it edge runs that way you can have confidence so when you root trust from a hardware root of trust mm -hmm. and build up a system like this then you have a protected uh, execution environment that you okay. have high confidence in. So how does that look like with, uh, with the IoT Edge uh, you know, security model and, and, uh, and what we provide right now? So the way we realize this, so this is building the secure device that connects to a cloud, right? Yep. So the way we realize this is to start with making sure, uh, giving uh, uh, our customers or whoever is building yep. uh, IoT Edge devices uh, the choice to get their root of trust from okay. wherever they want, and that so is important. What, what, what kind of like, what are we talking about here? Like concretely, what are the, cho the choices that we're talking about? What kind of, of HSMs and so on? Are a, a, a very good point. So let's take an HSM, hardware security module, yeah. like a trusted platform module, which yeah. is based on a standard that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Now, trusted platform module is a protocol yeah. that everybody understands, but the chip itself, especially a discrete trusted platform mm -hmm. module, which yeah. is a physical chip yeah. itself. It can be manufactured to have different properties to it. Okay. Some may operate at extended temperature range. Mm -hmm. uh, some may operate at high pressure. Okay. You know, extended temperature is good for automotive applications. Mm -hmm. It's required there. Yeah. High pressure is required for, say, medical sterilization, process yeah. called autoclaving. Okay. So you have these different environments, mm -hmm. these different uh, uh, compliance requirements that this root of trust devices have to uh, okay. ad adhere to. And different silicon manufacturers that add value into building in countermeasures against environmental attacks, against the fiscal attacks, if somebody okay. were to gain okay. access to it. So that is why we want to keep the platform open so that the different verticals, the different our customers well, can have a choice, uh, keep maintain their choice of root of trust. Yeah, yeah, yes. But with choice comes this fragmentation. That means anybody yeah. Yeah. can choose any root of trust somewhere. And mm -hmm. if you remember, one of the threats is that with the fragmentation, mm -hmm. uh, there is a huge surface there. So how do we bring that surface together? Yep. That is where Microsoft steps in mm -hmm. by offering the Azure IoT Edge Security Manager okay. as a way to bring all of this together. So mm -hmm. this is a yep. uniform layer that Microsoft builds, maintains, to, to layer onto to, to root trust from this different root of trust okay. hardware and then build the secure environment and the operating environment where Azure IT Edge runs. So okay. Azure IT Edge runs, will, while running, it can connect to cloud applications, mm -hmm. it can yeah. connect to the cloud and yeah. downstream applications, yeah. and you can still gain confidence with yeah. it. So awesome. what shape does that take? So I see here on the diagram that the screen part is actually under the secure OS. So is, is the Edge um, manager, security manager, running yes. as a daemon or as a service on Windows and Linux? So what actually is it? Uh, that's a good point. So let's deep dive into the security manager and see what mm -hmm. it is. Okay. So the first and foremost, we consider this the trusted computing base, meaning that all its functions is centered around security. Mm -hmm. And if you remember earlier with the operating system, the rich operating system, the engineering of it, if somebody were to gain physical access to the, to the hardware, mm -hmm. then that becomes questionable because of the different things that they can do yeah, yeah. on that piece of hardware. So the security manager is meant to even run outside of this operating system environment. Okay. So one of its goal is really to protect the operating system itself. So it comes under it the operating system. It comes underneath basically. the operating so system. It started first, and that's the one that actually will ensure that's the right OS that is actually loaded. The right so kernel, on. the right operating system, okay. the right applications running on there. So it is mm -hmm. at a different context altogether isolated Got from it. the operating system. Makes sense. So one of Makes the benefits sense. that comes from there, if there is a zero day attack on yeah. an operating system, mm -hmm. then the security manager, which is isolated from that, will not be vulnerable to the mm. zero day okay. attack. So okay. it's good to have that isolated. Okay. So we build this to be a native process for that mm -hmm. purpose. And we build it using machine compilable language like C, uh, and okay. we actually use Rust, Rust in this yeah. particular case, mm -hmm. which is a safer way of writing machine compilable language. Okay. And the goal of this is to allow uh, the makers of the root of trust to be able to compile this and root it natively into the root of trust devices without having any uh, uh, translation okay. layers which can actually introduce uh, uh, expanded threat surfaces. Okay. So the goal is to really root trust into it. So what we are looking at here, the silk screen that we see here, is the Azure IT Security Manager itself. Okay. In there, one of the main components there is a security daemon. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So the, this daemon is a piece of software that Microsoft writes and maintains. Okay. And the goal of this daemon is to watch and make sure that the operating platform is, is safe. Okay. So for example, if a module uh, in Azure IoT Edge mm -hmm. were to access its keys to complete the TLS transactions, for example, yeah, yeah. that access is going to come through the security daemon. And in that case, okay. it's acting like a gatekeeper okay. to make sure that the module accesses only its keys mm -hmm. and doesn't access the keys of another module. Remember, mm -hmm. this is an environment where yeah, modules yeah. from different sources would, e would yeah. coexist on this mm -hmm. environment. So it would be a gatekeeper to make sure that only uh, uh, keys from this module is, ac is accessible. Okay. Uh, while doing that, it will attest make mm -hmm. some attestations on the module, you know, to make sure that it is still the same module okay. that was loaded from the beginning. So it does measurements on the module itself. Uh, a common thread would be somebody boots up the system through the high assurance mm -hmm. boot method and then uh, accesses memory uh, uh, through a side channel yeah. method, for yeah, example, yeah. Mm -hmm. to corrupt bits in there. That is malware injection. Mm -hmm. Should that happen at runtime, the security daemon is a piece that is meant to, to watch and catch mm -hmm. that. So it serves as a gatekeeper, it serves as a, as a sentinel watching to make sure that the rest okay. of the Azure IT Edge device is running awesome. correctly. Okay. And then uh, uh, below that is a highly abstracted, uh, it's, a, it's an abstracted interface to mm -hmm. any root of trust device. So yep. we call this HSM, Hardware Security Module, Platform Abstraction Layer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we deliberately abstracted this from other protocols. We did not index into any particular protocol. Okay. In this particular case, you see that we've implemented the TPM API okay. below this abstract. Mm -hmm. So what this is saying is that if you come in, you can implement another standard underneath this. For example, PKCS 11 okay. interface on there. Yeah. And there are many root of trust silicon out there that are proprietary and have proprietary interface. We want that to be accessible yeah. as well. So mm -hmm. that is why we build it in here. Got it. Yeah, over here. Okay, all of that green, is it open source? When you say people can actually build their own, you know, uh, protocol API there. Yes. That means because the the project is all open source, it they is can actually open contribute source. to it or just use it if they want. To. You can contribute to it. You can use it directly, and it's it's open source for transparency, really, okay. yeah, in yeah. order for, uh, for for high integrity. Yeah. Yes, that okay. is true. So the green the green pieces here are the pieces that Microsoft maintains. Yeah. You know, with a uh, mm -hmm. with assurances yeah, yeah. on there, and then the orange pieces here are the pieces that we expect our uh, partners, silicon partners, to build in the drivers for their specific custom devices on there, and then all of this is open source. Okay. Correct. One one more question uh, for you. So, all of that security uh, infrastructure which is under the OS, does that require any changes to the OS itself, or is it just transparent for the OS? It is meant to be a very great question. It is meant to be transparent for the OS. So part of this is for it to take an authoritative position and make sure that only the right OS is loaded. Yeah. So it is completely independent of the OS. Okay. Yeah. And is the part that actually measures the OS and make sure that it is the right OS that is loaded. Okay. So the last thing you want is uh, have somebody load mm. their own OS on your device yeah, yeah. that is doing something that you do not understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally. <laughs> okay. So transparent for the OS, all open source, adapts to the various HSMs, uh, architectures and, and protocols that exist today Correct. to give choice to the customers. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Choice is a big deal. Yes. So um, where can people learn more about all of that? I think this is like a great overview of the IoT Edge security model. I think yes. you have a link to share so that people absolutely. can actually learn more. So yes, there is a link here, aka MS IoT Dash Security Manager. Okay. So if you go to that link, there's going to be more information, more details on how we actually implement this, and you can gain access to the source code by going through this link itself. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Eustace, that was a very insightful presentation of the Azure IT Edge security model. Uh, yes. I invite everyone actually to go learn more about it if you're in the business of creating mm -hmm. IT Edge devices. Eustace, looking forward to see you soon on the show again. Thank you very Thanks much, Olivier. It was a pleasure. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for the show as well. Bye. Thank you, everyone.